Have you ever played Subnautica, the game where you explore a beautiful ocean filled with diverse life that is also offset by a healthy dose of existential dread? Have you ever sailed into the void only to realize that you have made a mistake? I'm in danger! Because you got attacked by three ghost leviathans and your cyclops is on fire, and yet you might have made the best goddamn decision of your life because someone decided that a person's last few moments should be filled with the dankest fucking beats you have ever had the pleasure of hearing. Baratram is a 2D horror dying simulator set in the depths of female Europe because a bunch of humans decided to pull a good old American yeah. colony moment and quite literally dipped the fuck out. It also has exactly none of the aforementioned beautiful ocean life. All that remains is pain and suffering that is almost comparable to that time when the courts had me pay $10,000 in child support. Amogus for a kid I will never even be able to see grow up. In the depths of an ocean filled with hostile creatures that are the very personification of FUCK NO you control a submarine with up to 16 crewmates. The entire point of the game is to try to keep death at bay because it will come whether you like it or not. For example, you see these people here? Let me ask you a question. If you have one room that is welded shut with limited oxygen and you have 16 people inside of it, what do you think is going to happen? Precisely, they die. Except this one woman who found an oxygen- They die. Death in this game can come in many forms. Death can come from below, in the form of a creature from your nightmares. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Or in the form of going out and fighting a group of aliens with nothing but batons. Coming back from the glorious bloodbath victorious your ship only for your average Genshin player brained doctor to shoot you with copious amounts of meth and sending you into a coma which you will never wake up from. Trying to operate a submarine in this game is a true stress test. It breaks constantly and every time you fix a problem a new one appears. The submarines may as well be made out of fucking origami paper because it takes one small mistake and it doesn't matter if you consent or not. Oh, it's just an icicle. It would actually be fair to say that you spend more time sunken at the bottom of the sea than you actually do swimming. Did I mention that the most downloaded mods in this game are anime waifu skin mods? This is why my father left me. There are five classes in the game, all with similar yet different focuses. The fact that one class has a specific job does not mean, however, that no one else can do the job too. It's just that they are better at it and have dedicated talents to doing their job. The captain is usually the server host. His helm skill is the highest, which affects how fast the ship moves and how easy it is to control. The security officer is just really good at guns and beating things up. He is the guy you want to have on turrets as he has really good weapon handling and accuracy. Both the mechanic and the electrical engineer just fix things really fast without getting hurt. The medic is a guy you do not want to make mad because you might find yourself waking up with a drug addiction and an alien in your throat. So now that you have acquired basic knowledge, you decided to start the new game and here you are. What now? Well, click on the campaign and set it up how you want, although I recommend you keep max missions at 2 or 3 maximum. As for the difficulty, it goes something like this. You are a baby playing with rubber duckies in the bathtub for the first time. You stub your toes for fun. And then finally, say goodbye to your family as they will never be able to find your dead lifeless body in this cold dead ocean. Now that you have set up your campaign, let's choose a submarine. Each submarine has a different layout and each one is meant for a different size group of people as well as for different purposes. But right now you do not care about any of that because you are a stupid clan who has no idea what they're doing. So let me establish something. I am base. You are cringe. Let's start with the smallest and easiest sub to play, the Barsuk. This is a blueprint of the submarine, here's what everything is. This is the command console interface. On the left you can see the status of the ship. As for piloting the ship, you can click or hold on the radar part to tell your ship how fast and where to go. The active sonar sends out a sound to map all things around you. However, it's also the same thing as going to BDSM party tied up and spreading your ass cheeks on the table. Therefore, do it only sparingly and only when you know there are no threats, or if you really need to know where you are. The passive sonar only lets you see things that are very close by and or moving. A nice compromise between the two is the directional ping. 
where you only send sound in a directed cone to map out a specific part of your surroundings. Now let's get over to the most important part of the ship, the reactor. Now you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is this? Well, the reactor is usually the engineer's job, and you, a cringe Genshin player with no understanding of the game, would turn on automatic control and then just supply the reactor with fuel. A Crusader King's family circle incest injurer would manually align and optimize the power output of the reactor with the ship's power requirement. An absolute gigacha nuclear physicist would automate the entire thing and make it look like this. Guns. The chain gun is a low damage inaccurate gun that is compensated by a fast fire rate. The coil gun, the opposite of the chain gun. The pulse laser, high damage charge laser. The rail gun is the one big fuck you you can send to any alien bastard in your way. Its ammunition is railgun shells which can effectively one shot most of your troubles. And if there are troubles that you cannot one shot, you can load them up with varying levels of explosives to give them a little... <laughs> If things are still not getting the memo, you can load in one big round of classic American justice. That is, of course, the nuclear railgun shell. The nuclear shell will pretty much undo millions of years of evolution in one big area. The best part about this is that you can also fill the nuclear shell with explosives. But at that point, it's not about the damage. It's about sending a message. Depth charges are slow bombs you shoot out the bottom of your ship. Your best friends will be the decoy charges, as almost every monster will be drawn to them like a discord mod is to anything below the age of consent. You can fill them up with explosives for added effect, a great strategy when combined with a depth decoy as it will explode on contact with any alien. You can then retrieve them from their landing point. Discharge curls zap a part of the ship and stun enemies around it. Now that you know what submarines are all about, I will tell you about outposts. They are your best friend and the one safe place you will have in this game. You can buy different supplies here at various vendors, heal up your wounds, get employees and accept missions as well as get new submarines. There are different types of outposts and they will also belong to different factions. Having good relations with factions leads to better prices or certain special events, although make sure you don't have negative relations or it won't end well. However. No faction truly matters like children of the honk mother. They are, for all intents and purposes, fucking clowns. One thing I failed to mention earlier is the existence of the assistant class. The assistant class is for new players, however, this matters not, for there is a special talent tree dedicated to being a clown. Amidst an ocean full of Lovecraftian horrors, you can be a fucking clown, and it's the funniest shit I've ever seen. The clown can also get a special weapon. The clown hammer. It does nothing except the honk. Except it has a 0.75% chance to insta-kill anything it hits. And naturally, there are madmen who have killed the strongest creature in the game with it. See these fuckers? They are called crawlers. They are the most basic enemy in the game and they are beta cucks which you can feed with simple tools. To put it simply, fuck threshers. They are basically crawlers, but the one defining trait that makes them so much worse is their persistence. They WANT to get inside. They NEED to get inside. They WILL eat your flesh. And these? Mud raptors. They are pain, because they don't care about the fact that they are fish. They can run on land, and they are equipped with razor sharp claws that can tear through doors so you cannot hide. They are... What, 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 is, is this motherfucker dancing on me? They are essentially China, and you, my friend, are Taiwan. Now, on this channel, the political is not political. And, to prove my point, I will now beat an alien baby to death. I will not spoil you all the surprises that hide in the ocean, but be warned. There is no greater fear than seeing a signature the size of a submarine, and then seeing it move towards you. Also, I have three words. Fuck. Alien. Ruins. Anyways, there is this crazy little thing. And it's not called love. It's called the husk. The husk is a parasite that can infect other living things and slowly turn them into terminator zombies. You can get infected by either going into contact with an infected creature or getting stabbed with an injection of parasite eggs. When you get infected you go through a few stages the game will tell you about. We don't really care about the first phases though. 
In the third phase, a tentacle will burst out of your mouth and you will go mute, unable to chat or use voice comms. Now if you are a good teammate, you would tell your crewmates about this infection before this and get yourself cured with the antidote or throw yourself out the airlock. If you're me, however, you're going to take all the possible cures and remedies, throw them out of the airlock and then infect all of your crewmates with your newly gained tentacle attack. Bonus points if it's a Russian server. The third stage also gives you a few nice bonuses like crush depth immunity and removing the need to breathe. Once it ends, you go into a violent seizure state after which you wake up as an uncontrollable zombie that infects others. There is another type of infection called ballast flora. They float in water visible as spores. Mmm, lean water. Whenever your ballasts pump in water, they have a chance of being infected. Once that happens, your ballasts eventually stop working. Then it starts spreading and the only way to get rid of it is a little thing I like to call... Being an American soldier about to permanently scar a Vietnamese child with copious amounts of napalm. Also, if you ever see a rectangular object on the seafloor, it's probably a wreck. But for your own sake, do not get close until you nuke the thing from orbit. Trust me. One thing I have not touched on in this guide is crafting. You have the fabricator, deconstructor and medical fabricator. You need some talents to craft some items and skill high enough to be able to turn a 5 minute craft into a 30 second craft. With that, I believe this video is coming to an end. If you believe I missed something, let me know because I don't care.